Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Mobile Gadgeteer. As you've been reading, I started my iPad Experience series where I'm going to run through a bunch of different aspects of the uh, the Apple iPad, and um, I posted an introduction article and an article on uh, Bible applications. Now we're going to take a look at the ebook readers that are currently on the iPad, and um, this one I'm going to use a video because I think these are pretty compelling. So you'll see in my article there are three ebook readers that I currently have found on here uh, Apple's iBooks, Amazon Kindle, and Kobo. Uh, I understand that Barnes & Noble e-reader is also under development and should be coming out shortly. So let's walk through these three and you can read more details about them in my actual post and image gallery. So first we'll start iBooks and I've got it saved down here as a favorite. So we tap on iBooks to launch it. Let me start in the library here. Now you've seen Apple's video of this, I'm sure. Um, so I won't go into too much depth, but I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it here. This is your bookshelf. And as you can see, it's modeled after a bookshelf. You can actually tap up in the top and change that to uh, more details view and then uh, titles, authors, categories, however you want to sort it. And then bounce back to bookshelf there and then you can tap the other icon and go back to your bookshelf view. If you also tap edit, you have the option to, uh, as you can see, there's a little X to remove those books from your bookshelf. And if you tap on store in the upper left, it'll actually open up the app store and um, focused on books. So here you can see a book app store, iBook app store. And at the bottom, there's options for featured, New York Times, top sellers, top charts, and purchases. And then you can scroll up and down through um, a bunch of different titles, okay? And I believe, let's see, there's, a, there's actually a section called free books. If you tap on that, you'll see there's a, a number of the classics and things like that in the free books area. So you can get started testing out the application with, uh, with a few books. If we go back to my, uh, my library here, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but these two are actually Cory Doctorow's books, Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom and When Sis Admins Ruled the World, because the uh, Apple iBooks application actually supports non-DRM EPUB format books. So uh, sites like Feedbooks have a number, I mean, huge number of uh, non-DRM EPUB formatted books, and you can download them uh, to your Mac or PC. You just drag them over onto uh, the iTunes, and then they will be synced through iTunes and the iBooks uh, utility on the actual um, PC or Mac to your iPad. So not directly, I haven't found a way directly to get the iBook or the EPUB books on there, but you can do it through uh, syncing. If we turn it in landscape mode, the bookshelf jumps in landscape mode. So Winnie the Pooh, as you see here on my bookshelf, wasn't one I purchased, but it was included in the uh, the iPad purchase and the iBooks application. So as you can see here, we've got a, a view of books that is actually very similar to a physical book, right? Where the page dimensions over here, where you can see there's multiple pages. There's a spine in the middle, in the center, with it. it's kind of shadowed, so it gives you a real uh, physical book look and feel to it. Uh, you can jump back to your library here. Um, on the bottom, you can see there's a scroller, and as you can see, you can tap it and drag it back and forth to jump two different pages. Um, if we want to turn pages, we simply flip our finger right or left to, uh, to flip the page, just kind of like turning a book, all right? And then down at the bottom, it tells me how many pages are left in the chapter. It gives me kind of a status of what's going on. Over here on the right, if I tap this icon, it's a brightness uh, indicator and selector, so I can adjust the brightness for reading in bed and things like that. And we also have a, an icon for fonts. You can make them larger or smaller, and it'll go through uh, 10 different sizes. And if we tap on the fonts button, you can see there's actually five uh, selected fonts that you can choose from on uh, within iBooks. And then on the way on the right, there's a search button. Tap that, opens up the keyboard, and you can go ahead and type a search to search inside the book. Now, if you're on the book, if you tap and hold, It'll select a word with a little magnifying glass. If you let up on that, it says dictionary, bookmark, or search. Um, let me see if there's a word in here that's 
Okay, let's just see what it says for the dictionary. So if I tap dictionary for a moment, it uh, actually opens up the definition of it, and I can read the definition, scroll up and down in that definition, which is kind of nice. A double tap does the same thing on a word. You don't have to click and drag, you can actually double tap and do bookmark, search, or dictionary. Okay, so that's a look at, as you can see, the ebook reader for Apple, from Apple, called the iBook ebook reader. The next big one, of course, was the Amazon Kindle. So Kindle, uh, Amazon quickly launched their Kindle application for the iPad, and it supports Whisper Sync. So across uh, your Mac, your PC, your Kindle, and your iPhone are the only apps they have available now. Uh, you can sync all of your content. Okay, so again, you can show uh, books by their um, their cover. All right or more details in a thumbnail. And what you see in the background here, it's not a changeable background image of this kid reading the books, but what you will notice is that this background changes with the time of day. So now that it's nighttime, it's actually a nighttime view in the morning, in the daytime, this whole background and the, and the image uh, changes to reflect the particular time of day, which is kind of neat. So down here on the bottom, we could tap this uh, showing, it says home, we can go archived items. And archived items are all the books that I have purchased, and you don't see there's not that many, maybe 15, through the Kindle store. And if I was to tap on one of those, it would download it to the device. And then if I tap again, home, these are the books on the home that I've actually downloaded to the device for offline reading. And you can sort them by recent title author. You can do a sync, which will sync to your furthest read location. If you tap the I, you see there's settings, learn about the Kindle, provide feedback, and your settings just registers or deregisters your Kindle. There's not much else going on. There's basic reading mode on and off, which talks about uh, page turning animations and things like that. And I have those on because I'll show you those. It's more like a book. So that's portrait mode. There's landscape mode, not much different. Now, you, one thing you'll see here also is a store, right? So you shop in Kindle store. And so you tap on that. Unfortunately, what it does is it actually takes you out to the Safari web browser. There is no Kindle store for some reason built into the Kindle app at this time. And that may be something that comes later, but uh, other than that, you have to go through the, the website. Um, so the store experience isn't great, but the web browser is good. So it, it's not the best experience, but uh, it'll get it done. Actually, there was a button there to jump back into the Kindle app, I believe. I didn't have to jump out. So uh, let's take a look at a book, all right? So let's take a look at Anathem by Neil Stevenson. Okay, so we tap it, open up a book. Now, one nice thing about uh, the Kindle application is that it indeed takes up the entire display. If we tap on the center, somewhere in the text, a couple of uh, icons appear magically. We have a home button up here to jump back to the home on the Kindle app. We have a plus icon up in the top right for bookmark, which is the same one down here if I tap it. Plus or minus, it, it adds or removes a bookmark. Back is a back button. If we're jumping around, we can go back. If I tap the center one, it says it's a quick go-to, right? So there's go to the cover, table of contents, beginning, and a location. Unfortunately, the Kindle app still uses their their weird locations. Like currently, this one says 150-163, 1%. 1 I, I still don't completely understand the Kindle um, locations. I prefer page numbers, but uh, that's the way they work. If we tap on A, Right here, the letters, you'll see that there are uh, five font size selections. There's backgrounds, three, white, black, or sepia. I've got it on sepia now. If we tap black, you can see there. Go back to sepia. And then again, there's a, a brightness slider, okay? And then if we tap the sync, it actually syncs to your furthest location. Tap again in the center, those disappear. Now, if we wanted to, if we scroll up, scroll left or right, if I tap, I think, yeah, if I also, I can tap, or I can slide my finger from right to left, or tap the back, or left to right, and that does a page turn. So you can see that animation that's going on there. That's something that I've turned on in that main, main view. And if we bounce it over into uh, landscape mode, you see it kind of gives you that same look and feel to it. So there's some nice things in the Amazon application as well. Uh, content, of course, and then the full screen is nice to see. It's easy to uh, adjust some fonts, um, a little bit more in limited number. The iBooks app has 10 sizes, this one has 5 sizes. Um, there are no uh, font types that I found uh, to change font types, whereas the other two applications we're looking at actually do allow you to change your font types between uh, 5 different types. 
But again, the Whisper Sync is a nice feature and the content that uh, you may have already purchased through Kindle is nice. So lastly, we have one that I, I believe just launched today because I've been checking it all yesterday. Uh, so Sunday, uh, this is Kobo, which uh, used to be short covers. And it's actually a, uh, let me go back to the home here. It's actually a, um, a client that I've been using uh, quite a while with short covers because it has an Android client, a, a WebOS client. Uh, I believe there's a Mac client, a PC client. I don't know if there's, I believe there's an iPhone, well, of course there's an iPhone client and now an iPad client. So they have clients for multiple devices and somebody like me that uses multiple devices is just kind of nice. But even more than that is the, they often send uh, coupons and offers and discounts, you know, 15% off, $2 off. So there's a, a way to get books um, for pretty good prices and, and some savings while also having some free books that you can get and I'll show you that in a minute. So this is uh, their library when you first launch and sign in. Similar to kind of the uh, the iBooks, and if you tap over here on this toolbar, you'll see that you can actually change it to kind of a wood shelf. There's uh, seven different shelf backgrounds you can have, kind of like the floating wood. If you tap on bookmarks, you can change your bookmarks from the standard kind of green that I've got there to a blue or to a fish or a dog or a monkey. There are you know, a few different selections for bookmarks as well. And you can tap here, you can browse by title, author, recently read. You can flip between the full book covers or a more thumbnail view with some more details. And so that's your library view. Up top you can see there's the I'm Reading Library and Store. I'll go to the I'm Reading in a second. Um, oh yeah, if we tap and hold on a particular title, it'll open up some information about it, give you overview, table of contents. You can delete the book from your bookshelf or you can tap read the book to read the book. And if we jump on the store, one nice thing that you'll see here is the store is actually integrated into the client. Um, unlike the Kindle store. So here you can uh, view just released, top 50s, New York Times bestsellers, scroll down. You can see some other ones. You can tap show all to see more titles. And right here it says that newspapers and uh, magazines are coming to uh, Kobo soon. So that's nice to see. I'll have to keep an eye on that because there could be some good offers with that. You can also go up to the jump to and you can say browse categories, recommended reading. We'll see what the browse categories. And there you go. There's a bunch of different categories. If we say jump to recommended reading, here you go. Here's a bunch of recommendations. And we can go jump to home, and it brings you back to that home screen. And then you can also go up to there at the top and type in search. Again, uh, on this store, similar to the uh, the other stores, there's a plenty of free content available for you. So you can actually uh, give it a try um, for free and, and try out some of the applications. And the books, I mean. Now, if I tap on I'm reading, so there's a couple of titles that uh, I currently have open on my bookshelf that I've pulled down and, and browsed through. The Star Wars, which is a free one there, and Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So if I tap on this new Star Wars title, here it goes. It opens it up here, and as you can see, this is almost full screen, except for the very, very top, which has the time and the battery life, which is actually kind of nice because uh, it's full screen with just a slight um, missing part of it on the top but it still gives you some good information and if we bounce it over into landscape view again it takes up the screen and shows you that too so if we tap on the center it opens up a bunch of different things going on here we've got back table of contents overview and bookmarks and down here is another navigation as you can see it scrolls me through uh, different parts of the book with a navigation slider over here if i tap on the font it gives me uh, four different fonts and then there's a slider for different font sizes, okay? Actually, I didn't even go through all those different sizes to see how many there are. You can see it's kind of a dynamic slider there. If we tap on the brightness setting, there again is the night reading mode, which toggles the black and white, white and black. And then there's a um, brightness setting as well. Tap on here, it'll set a bookmark. Tap it again, it takes the bookmark off. If we tap the wrench, as Kobo styling, which are the page flips, uh, page fade, page curls, and that kind of thing. And as you can see here, this is a, just a page flip. Right? You can go down here and do a page curl similar to the other books. So when we turn it, the page actually flips up. Whoops. Hit the home button by accident. Sorry about that. So there we go. Um, that's kind of a big font, right? So let's go in here, make that a little bit smaller, trying to get some more on the page. 
and I haven't seen a way to like adjust the margins or anything. I think it's dependent on the book. Um, to turn pages, you can either tap or slide. All right, tap on the right side or slide. If you want to open up those menus, you tap in the center of the book. Okay, so that's a look at uh, Apple's iBooks, Amazon Kindle application, and the Kobo eBook reader on the Apple iPad 3. Great uh, content reading applications, and I wrote about it in my, uh, my review, why these are different and why you may want to use the different ones. I mean, they all kind of have different content. They don't overlap too much. And it kind of really depends on if you have an existing library that you want to bring over and uh, if you just want to try something new and you like that feature of, of that application. And the nice thing is every one of these has free books so you can try each one of them. Uh, try a free book and see which one works for you and whatever's best for you is best for you. So thanks for watching.